Hi. Welcome to Book Break for Greece Public Library. I'm Kirstra. I'm one of the librarians here, and I moderate our Pints and Prose book discussion group. And I am joined, as always, by Claire. Hello, everyone. I am Claire, and I moderate our As the Page Turns and also the Historical Fiction Book Club. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so it is the beginning of March. Hopefully spring is around the corner because I'm about done with winter. Oh, yeah. Um, But March is also Women's History Month. So in honor of Women's History Month, we thought we would devote this entire book break to some of our favorite women authors. Yeah. And I wanted to just note that it was just within the last 30 years that a lot of women have started winning the Pulitzer Prize, the National Book Award. So we need to make some progress in that area. It's definitely changing. But um, how do we change this? Well, We talk about women's books, we read women's books, and we put them in the hands of our friends and share them and encourage them to read them as well. So, and just a shout out to Edith Wharton, badass, for the first (laughs) Pulitzer Prize winner in 1921 for The Age of Innocence. So, Which book Claire and I both read for the first time not too long ago. Yeah. Um, And I think both of us really loved it. Yeah. I kind of was not looking forward to it and found Mm -hmm. that I liked it a lot more than I thought I was Mm -hmm. going to. So, yeah. And it reads pretty quickly, you know. It does, surprisingly quickly. You know, dense. So, Mm -hmm. absolutely. So, let's dive right in. Do you want to kick us off, Claire, with one of your favorite authors? Okay. Um, One of the ones I want to talk about. And I had a hard time because I realized I have a lot of favorite female Mm -hmm. authors, but Louise Erdrich for The Roundhouse. The Roundhouse was a National Book Award winner. She also just won the Pulitzer, I believe, last year with The Night Watchman, Okay, which is a story that I believe is based upon her grandfather. But um, Mm. let's talk about her. Or she's a member of the Turtle Mountain Band of Chippewa Indians. So she is from... Um, one parent was German, I believe her father and her mother was, you know, from the tribe. So she has a very unique aspect in the way of looking at things. Mm -hmm. And a lot of her books focus on that Native American heritage. And they're just so well done. Um, I really love this book. The Roundhouse is a story of a 13 year old boy whose mother is sexually assaulted. His father is a tribal judge but they don't know where the attack quite took place, whether it was on United States land or it was on Mm -hmm. tribal lands. So you have this conflict right from the beginning of Mm -hmm. tribal law versus United States law. Mm -hmm. And also the viewpoint of this 13 year old boy who wants vengeance for his mother and should not be put in this position. You know, he's kind of coming of age, but having to deal with this tragedy that has affected his whole family. Um, It's just, I don't know. It was so well written. The character stayed with me. And I really like learning about other cultures. Mm -hmm. And since I can thank our producer for like diving me into 1883, (laughs) I have really been interested in, you know, indigenous people, Native Americans. And um, she also owns a bookstore, Birch Birch Bark Books in Minneapolis, which... I really think I want to do a road tour of like famous authors owning bookstores. Like I want to do Parnassus in Nashville. Yeah, wouldn't that be fun? Yeah. There's a William Faulkner like bookstore in Oxford, Mississippi. Minneapolis is a fun town too. So never been there. So go in the summer. Yeah. Okay. (laughs) But no, highly recommend. And also, my book club is doing, I believe, The Night Watchman later this year. Okay. So nice. I've never read any Louise Erdrich. Oh, I I recommend it. Okay. Add that to my list. Yeah. All she right. also has a series for young people, too, I think. Hmm. Yeah. Like okay. a children's series. So Very cool. Yeah. All right. Um, I am going to start then um, with this one. So I picked uh, Margaret Atwood as one of my authors, and Alias Grace is the book of hers that I'm going to be talking about. So Margaret Atwood is a Canadian author, um, probably best known for writing The Handmaid's Tale, <laughs> which has had quite a moment in the last few years with Definitely. the series being made. And she wrote um, a sequel to it called The Testaments that came out two or three years ago. Um, and I love The Handmaid's Tale. It's it's kind of a tough dystopian read, um, but very good. But the other thing that Margaret Atwood does is she tells 
women's stories. Mm -hmm. So the one that I picked is Alias Grace. Um, This is actually based on historical events from Canada. Um, So in the 18... It's 1843. Um, Our main character is Grace Marks, who came to Canada from Ulster, from Ireland, uh, fleeing the Troubles. Um, And she ends up working as a domestic in Canada. So she is essentially like a live-in maid for a prominent family. Um, And there is a murder. So the family is murdered in kind of horrific, like, kind of Lizzie Borden style. Like... Murder. Um, And Grace and another person are accused and eventually convicted of this murder. The kind of tricky part is that Grace maintains the whole time that she has no recollection of the events in question. She has no recollection of the night when the murders happened. So the book is kind of an exploration of Grace's life, what it's like to be in servitude Mm -hmm. in Canada at that time. So there's um, issues of gender, there's issues of class very much. Um, The chapters are kind of um, uh, organized around, each one is like a quilt block. And some of the um, history of that quilt block, like the themes of that are woven into the themes of the book. So it's like women's work in every possible way. Okay. Right? So you've got the women's work of serving and cleaning, the women's work of sewing and quilting, and it all kind of wraps together in a very Atwoodian fashion. Okay. Um, So a lot of her books are not historical fiction. Only a couple of them are historical fiction. A lot of them were just sort of set contemporaneously to when she wrote them. Uh, But this one is really kind of a masterpiece. I think, and it has, it does have an ambiguous ending. So if you're one of those people that like cannot handle unclosed doors, then might not is, be the, this might not be the Atwood for you. Yeah. Um, but I really loved it. Okay. I've had that one on my list. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And there's a Netflix mini series that they made out of it as well. Oh, so. okay. Yeah. Nice. All right. So my next one is I have a favorite teen author, and it's Ruta, Ruta Sepistis. She is Lithuanian, and her tagline kind of is the seeker of lost stories. Because mm. what she does in her historical fictions is take actual events that most people don't know about and then kind of spins a tale about them to bring them to the light. Mm-hmm. Um, she has won, I believe it was a Carnegie Medal for her work. Um, she does a lot of research, which I, the one thing that really bothers me when I read uh, a historical fiction is if it's really a romance that's being billed as a historical fiction or mm-hmm. just another type of thing that barely, you, mm-hmm. you know that most of the events in it are not factual, are not based sure. on fact. Um, so I love her. This one, I Must Betray You, is actually about... Romania. Um, in the not so distant past, it is Nicolae Sekescu. Is that his name? I don't know. Who was the dictator of Romania? Uh, or something yes. Like yeah. So um, the people in this book, the families, it's like you're standing in line in the grocery store, just mm-hmm. to give you an idea, and you get a can of dented beans. Woo! <laughs> um, electricity can go on and off. Mm-hmm. There is just so much instability Mm -hmm. in the lives of everyday people and of course the dictator is living in complete and total opulence Um, but what he does is there's a whole network of informants and they find your weaknesses and in the case of our protagonist it's a teenage boy whose grandfather lives in their apartment with them and they believe he has cancer and he's trying to get the proper medicines that he needs because Mm -hmm. they're just not available in the the normal channel. So he is blackmailed into becoming an informant because he was in the possession of an American dollar, which he traded for like a comic book or something very innocuous. Um, Doesn't even remember how he got it. So he doesn't know if it's planted or who is against Mm. him. Um, 
And it just goes from there where he's forced to tell he be, his mother cleans for the American diplomat in Romania. Um, so he goes along at times and talks to the diplomat's son who takes him to the American library and he is forced to give out. And he's constantly under the struggle of how much he wants to divulge versus how much he needs for his own family he doesn't really know who set him up Mm. Um, it is quite the maze and you begin to realize how these people who want to fight for their freedom just had so much to be fearful of Um, and then in the end she kind of ends it with like official documents you know going through like one of the things I kind of figured out because you figure out very quickly that there is more than one mole that is living in their household Mm. um it was it was really good just like all her other books I really really like this one and it brought to light you know all I remember is Nadia Komenich from the Olympics and Mm -hmm. then how she (laughs) left and everything but um it does it shines a light on an area of history and it's just all that more you know when you're looking at now what's going into Ukraine, uh, it, it just makes it timely. Sure. So, yeah, loved Interesting. it. Interesting. Okay. Loved it. I have also um, not read any Ruta Sepidus. Yeah. I'm so ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm also ashamed. No, no shame, no shame. We all have so many authors. Yeah. But yeah. I just, you know, got attached to her reading mm-hmm. her. And then, of course, we had her for the teen you teen know, book we fest. had Teen Book Fest. Yeah. We had to have her virtually for, um, and my teen advisory board just listened to her. But yeah, she's she's amazing. Very cool. So nice. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to the classics at this point, or what I consider classics. I'm going to go with Agatha Christie, who is still, I believe, I'm pretty sure she still holds the record for the most published author of all time. Yeah. Uh, most books in print of all time. Um, so she's been translated into basically every language. Um, everyone knows Agatha Christie. There've been a couple of books that have come out recently about Agatha Christie herself. Um, and the period, so there was like a 10 day period after, um, she found out that her husband was having an affair. She just disappears. Disappeared. (laughs) She disappeared for like 10 days. They still don't really know what, where she was or what happened. Just poof, gone. Um, so there've been some books about that and about her, but yeah, Agatha Christie has never been out of print basically since she started writing, um, in the twenties. Yeah, I believe it was the twenties. Um, and this one, the mysterious affair at styles, um, I'm not going to talk about it too much, but it is the first book featuring her most famous detective, Hercule Poirot, uh, the Belgian detective who comes to live in England after the Great War and solves all of the crimes using his little gray cells. Um, If you are anywhere near my age and you were nerdy like me, you may remember the extremely long-running PBS mystery series of Poirot that I watched religiously every week. New Poirot. Love it. I just, I love Agatha Christie. So she basically created the cozy mystery Like, she created an entire genre. Mm -hmm. Um, She also, one of her other detectives is Miss Marple, who is the original, like, nosy granny next door. Like, you don't have Murder, She Wrote without Miss Marple. Right. Right? Like, this woman just created the literary landscape for mysteries, basically. So um, if you want to read her in order... So for Poirot, you would start with this one, The Mysterious Affair at Styles. I don't think you really need to read them in order, though. Mm-hmm. There are some little plot pieces that carry through, um, but it's kind of like Law & Order, where you can just kind of jump in anytime. Right, and still enjoy and it. And still enjoy the mystery. Yeah. Um, there are red herrings everywhere. Like, the the fun is trying to read through and figure it out as you go, um, which you basically never do. <laughs> Because there's too many red herrings. She throws too much misinformation out there. Um, Takes you down a wrong track. But Poirot always figures it out, usually in a very, like, knives-out final 
drawing room conversation where all of the suspects are gathered and then he like walks you through his reasoning, um, which seems kind of cliche now. And that's why like they make fun of it in Knives Out. Right. But she invented it. Yeah. <laughs> like that didn't exist before Agatha Christie. So she was really a trailblazer, incredibly prolific. And her books are just a heck of a lot of fun. Okay. So. I have not read an Agatha Christie. Really? Yeah. Can that you believe is surprising that? to me. I know. I know. Huh. I need to change that. So yeah. many things I have as as goals. Yeah. I used to wise. collect them from like yard sales and book sales. I was like, are there any Agatha Christie's? I had like <laughs> shelves and shelves of like ratty paperbacks of Agatha Christie. Nice. Yeah. All right. All right. The next one I'm going to talk about is... Our third annual Grease Reads, A Woman is No Man by Etaf Rum. Um, I read this one a while ago. I'm going to reread it because we are <laughs> having the author visit on the 24th and actually so having our big book discussion, which is coming up as well mm-hmm. in March. So yes. this one was just heart-wrenching to read. Mm-hmm. It is a very unique story. It's an own voices story of... The abuse that many women in Arab cultures, in this case it's Palestinian, um, suffer even when they come to the United States. So the way Etoff has written this, it starts with Isra, who was a 17-year-old girl. Um, She loves romantic books, and instead of her happily ever after ending, she finds herself betrothed and on her way to America to be a man, a wife to a man that she barely knows in 1990. They land in Brooklyn, New York in a very um, culture setting of people other like herself. Mm -hmm. And she finds herself almost trapped in this apartment all the time, living with her in-laws. And her life is pretty much dictated to her. Her mother-in-law puts tremendous pressure on her to bear a male son, And by the time she is 25, she has born four daughters, and her story does not end well. I don't want to give it away in spoilers. Um, Then we fast forward to, I believe, 2008, Mm -hmm. when Farida, who was Isra's mother-in-law, is now trying to arrange a marriage for her oldest daughter, Dea, um, who is visited by a mysterious woman, and she begins to question all the truths that she knew about her family, um, about what happened to her parents, about what particularly happened to her mother, and tries to find out where her own future lies as she's being interviewed by these prospective spouses Mm -hmm. to be a wife and mother at the bright old age of 18 years old. Um, so, yes, it's very timely. It, it just brings out how much there are many places in the world that have this patriarchal culture mm-hmm. and how women are trapped in these situations without any type of financial independence, without a mm-hmm. voice for what they want. So I think the visit with the author will be phenomenal. Um, looking forward to it. But I think it's a book that a lot of people should read. Just just to open your eyes to what's out there mm-hmm. in the world or other situations. So Absolutely. I loved this book. Yeah. <laughs> loved it. Um, and it is heartbreaking, but it is a story that we haven't heard before, mm-hmm. I think. Um, and the thing that really struck me, the thing that was so hard, was the incredible isolation that these women live under. Like you were talking about... Um, Isra basically like never leaves her house like she right is she actually would look out the window to see the feet going by yeah. to know that there were other yeah. people because they're in the basement of the the in-laws house mm-hmm. but she did the other thing that I loved about this is you know the the literature mm-hmm. that she kind of ties in with them wanting Absolutely. to read loving to read that was a real escape for them mm-hmm. um and the author owns a a coffee and bookstore in North Carolina that is named after the bookstore that's mentioned in the book, which I think is very cool. So yeah, yeah, so very exciting. I'm s- I can't wait. Oh, I can't for either. the author to be here. Yeah. Um. So little plug, author will be here on March 24th. Um. You can register for that event right on our website. 
Um, we're also going to be having a big book discussion on Monday the 14th at Blue Barn Cidery, where we will be talking about A Woman Is No Man. Mm-hmm. Um, there are copies in the system if you want to check out a copy. There are also, Hoopla has both formats, so audio and print, available for download on your phone or tablet with no wait times. So if that book sounds like something you might be interested in, uh, please do check it out and join us for the discussion or the author visit. Right. Come and talk to us about yeah, it. Absolutely. Um, so I will wrap up then with my last book um, and my last author, which is Assassination Vacation by Sarah Vowell. Um, I have talked about one of her other books before, um, Unfamiliar Fishes, which is about um, the fall of the Kingdom of Hawaii and Hawaii's annexation to the U.S. Okay. Uh, this one is about, um, <laughs> so the author basically does a road trip across the United States to the sites of political assassinations. Oh. <laughs> so it's an interesting premise. Um, so, you know, from Buffalo to Alaska, Washington to the Dry Tortugas. So we've got Presidents Lincoln, Garfield, and McKinley, um, and a whole bunch of other folks. So it's just kind of a tour through the um, messier side of our political history. Uh, But the thing that Sarah Vowell does so well is she really has a gimlet eye for American history. Like she can point out the things about our country that are um, less than ideal with humor <laughs> and grace um, and just kind of poke some gentle fun at things that are still very serious. Um, so Sarah Val has about five or six books. The last one came out in 2015. She's due for another one. I would like another one, please. Um, but they all kind of center around American history or okay. American pop culture and um, I came to Sarah Vowell from This American Life. She's a contributor there from time to time. Um, she also voiced Violet in The Incredibles. So, oh, <laughs> and okay. she has a very unique voice. So I always recommend, well, not always, but often recommend um, audio, audio versions when of authors book. read their own books. And yeah. she does read her own books. So getting that that voice in your ear is just a little added bonus. Yeah. Um, but yeah, no one makes you laugh and cry about our country like Sarah Vowell. Okay. So, yeah. So okay. that's what we've got today. Yeah, that wraps about wraps up what we've got. Absolutely. So. But we would love to hear from you all um, if you have favorite women authors or books by women authors that you turn to. We would love to hear all about that. Somebody mentioned Ann Patchett because I was so oh, close sure. to like bringing her in today too. She's another one I love. I've read two of her books. I really loved one and the other one I did not love the ending. Okay. So Fair. I've been I've been <laughs> leery to pick up more Ann Patchett. <laughs> but uh, you know, that's why. Yeah, there are so many books for so many readers. So tell us what you're reading. Um, We'll be back in a couple of weeks with a roundup of some other stuff that we've been reading. Yeah, I've really been reading a lot, so I'll have some good things to talk about. Good. Just too many things lately. So many things for me to add to my to be read list. Yeah. Well, you do the same to me. (laughs) So back at you. (laughs) All right. So until next time, thanks, everybody. Take care.